In today's video, we're going to be checking out another USB condenser microphone called the Movo UM700. And it's a pretty direct competitor to the Blue Yeti. So is it time to tell the Blue Yeti to move over? I feel like I'm just copying Tom Buck at this point. Quick disclaimer, Movo did send me this microphone to test and make a review on it, but there is no condition that I say anything in particular. So you're just going to get my honest uh, analysis and opinions on this microphone. Why do I say this is a direct competitor to the Yeti? Form factor wise, they're very similar and functionality wise, they're identical. You get all the same controls on the Movo UM700 that you get on the Yeti from a front volume knob for your headphone output to a mute button. And on the back of both microphones, there's a gain dial and as well as a polar pattern selector switch. So this is a multipolar pattern microphone just like the Yeti. They also output 16-bit at 48 kilohertz, so exactly the same audio fidelity with both microphones. They both come with a big, heavy, chunky stand. It's definitely a high-quality stand. On the bottom, you get a micro USB connector, so people, I'm sure, are going to be bummed out that it's not USB-C, but it is a 10-foot long cable, so plenty of cable length, and you also get a 3.5 millimeter out to connect headphones for wireless monitoring, but you can also use this as a device, a speaker output in Windows and Mac OS to listen to whatever your uh, computer is outputting in terms of audio. There's a 5 8 inch thread mounted in the bottom of this, but there's no 3 8 inch adapter. So for some reason, it doesn't come with that adapter. So if you want to put this on some boom arms, you're going to have to uh, get an adapter yourself. It also comes with a foam windscreen. So we can check that out at some point too. So we're listening to this in the cardioid polar pattern, hopefully. And I'm recording directly into o Adobe Audition. I'm not going to do any post-processing. I'll probably just have to boost the levels a little bit. The build quality on the Movo is really good. I would say it's maybe just a slight notch below the Blue Yeti. It's a little bit lighter. There's something rattling around in it if you shake it. <laughs> so I'm not really sure what that is. All of the buttons and dials feel very similar to the Yeti as well. The mute button has a pretty loud click. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it. unmuted, just like the Yeti does. So throughout this video, you can just listen to it and just evaluate how you think it sounds. I'm about, I don't know, five and a half inches away from the front of the microphone, sort of talking across it a little bit. But a little bit later, I will do a more direct comparison between the Movo and the Yeti. I'm also going to get my wife to come up and record as well so you can hear how it sounds on her voice. But also just check the timestamps below if you want to skip around to various tests. So this is the Movo as I get about one inch away from the front of the microphone. And this is how it sounds on my voice with the windscreen on. And this is how it sounds with the windscreen off about one and a half inch away, one and a half inches away from the front of the Movo UM700. Now I'm going to test the off axis rejection so you can hear how the microphone rejects noise coming from different sides and also how the tone changes as you move around the microphone. So this is me talking into the front of the Movo from about five inches and now rotating around to the side. This is how it sounds. And now coming around to the back of the Movo, this is how it sounds, talking into the back of it and then coming around to the other side, back around to the front. So this is the Yeti talking into the front of it. And now this is the Yeti in the cardioid pattern talking into the side of it. Here's the Yeti talking into the back of it. So this is how it's going to pick up sound backing bouncing off the wall and coming into the back of the microphone and now the other side of the microphone this is how the yeti sounds talking into the side of it and now coming back around to the front next i want to test the handling noise so if you do have it on your desk on the stand and if you happen to tap on your desk like a weirdo this is how it sounds if you tap on the bottom of the stand this is how it sounds if you tap on the base of the microphone this is how that sounds and then tapping on the metal windscreen. That's how that sounds. No, I don't have it on a stand, but here's what it sounds like if you tap the Yeti directly on the microphone. And here's how it sounds if you tap on the metal windscreen. Is that annoying? So I'm not gonna test all of the polar patterns. I think the ones that are most useful for this application for spoken word is obviously the cardioid pattern for picking up your own voice. And then also the bi-directional if you wanted to plop it down in between two people uh, so we'll test that one, and then maybe I'll just test the 360 degree. So if you did have a table <laughs> full of people who are all trying to record on one microphone, you might get an idea of how that could sound. Speaking from about the same distance as I was in the cardioid pattern, this is the bidirectional pattern speaking directly into the front of the microphone. This is how it sounds from about the same distance. 
speaking into the back of the Movo in the bi-directional polar pattern. Here is the Yeti in the bi-directional polar pattern, me talking into the front of the Yeti in the bi-directional polar pattern. Here is the Yeti talking into the rear in the bi-directional polar pattern. So if you plop this microphone down in between two people, this is how it's gonna sound. Now we're in the 360 degree pattern. So this could be useful if you had this set, set in the middle of a group of people all trying to record on a microphone, talking into the front of it in the 360 degree pattern. And I'll just rotate it around and keep talking. Uh, the weather is really nice today. It's kind of stormy, very humid. And this is how it sounds as I spin the microphone around. And now we're in the back of the microphone in the 360 degree pattern. Here is the Yeti in the 360 degree pattern, me talking into the front of it and now just rotating around the microphone, just continuing to talk. How about that weather today? I didn't even know it was gonna storm. Wanted to take my dog for a walk, but I definitely missed the boat on that. Maybe later, maybe I'll be able to take him for a walk later. Now we're back around to the front of the microphone. Alrighty, I'm gonna read something from the internet so we'll have a very direct comparison between this microphone and the Blue Yeti, and then my wife will read the same thing so you'll get a direct comparison of how they sound. This multimedia poem is a profound meditation on place. Based on photographs and sound recordings taken from the same window over the course of a year, window seeks to capture a sense of space for readers to enter. This multimedia poem is a profound meditation on place. Based on photographs and sound recordings taken from the same window over the course of a year, Window seeks to capture a sense of space for readers to enter. This multimedia poem is a profound meditation on place. Based on photographs and sound recordings taken from the same window over the course of a year, Window seeks to capture a sense of space for readers to enter. Norman directly credits John Cage as an inspiration for this piece. A musician interested in exploring the potential of ambient sound, this multimedia poem is a profound meditation on place, based on photographs and sound recordings taken from the same window over the course of a year. Window seeks to capture a sense of space for readers to enter. Norman directly credits John Cage as an inspiration for this piece. So it's been several days since I recorded the majority of this video and I've been listening back to a lot of the audio that I've recorded with this microphone and comparing it to the Yeti. Here are my thoughts on the microphone. I think overall it represents a pretty decent value in comparison to the Yeti. It has all the same features, all the same functionality, and at a lower price point. The sound of it is different than the Yeti. Um, in my opinion, it's uh, lacking in low end and the highs are a little bit too high, <laughs> a little bit too brittle, and a little bit too um, sibilant, especially for my voice. So it does have a lot of those harsh S's and picks those up and emphasizes them too much in my opinion. So for me, if I were to use this microphone going forward, I would definitely need to do some EQ to bring up that low end and also bring down that high end a lot and maybe do a, a pretty substantial de-esser on it. Uh, listening back to the recordings that my wife recorded, same thing with her. I do think that overall it sounded nice on her voice, but again, it was too sibilant and too harsh with those S's, especially in comparison with the Blue Yeti, which definitely has more low end, and also the high end is not over boosted, and it's not too sibilant either. So my preference between the sound of the sound on both microphones is for the Yeti, but the sound is good. It just needs a little bit more work, in my opinion. Another place where I feel like it falls a little bit short of the Yeti is in some of those polar patterns, especially the 360 degree polar pattern where this just sounds way too echoey. Um, it just picks up way too much of the room tone as, as in comparison with the Yeti, which sounded more natural and sounded more like the cardioid pickup pattern. It does suffer from handling noise, but the Blue Yeti does too. And they both suffer from plosives. Well, I didn't do a direct plosive comparison. You can you can hear the plosives, especially when I did that the voiceover recording that I recorded and my wife recorded. Both microphones have a hard time with plosives, so you have to be careful with how you address them, or just go ahead and get a pop filter. But as you can hear, if you talk across it a little bit and just be careful with how you say certain uh, consonants, then you can do a, a pretty good job of minimizing them just on your own. The final verdict is that I do prefer the sound of the Blue Yeti, and I do think that it's just an overall slightly more refined microphone than the Mobo UM700. This is a good value. It does everything that the Yeti does, but I think it might, I mean, it's just a slight bit less good. <laughs> it is cheaper than the Yeti, so it's worth taking a look at, and it might sound better for your voice. Again, I think it's just too high-pitched for me and too sibilant for me but it might not be the same for you. All right, so I'm gonna quit beating a dead horse. I appreciate you watching this video. Maybe I'll see you in another one, and that's it. Okay, goodbye.